welcome to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all of our 8th graders, although everyone is welcome to tune in. This lesson is this week's first in the series. My name is Mr. Ayers, and I am an 8th grade ELA teacher in Tennessee schools. I am so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find it at www.tn.gov education. You can still tune in for today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others. Today we will be learning about parasites, real life body snatchers. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson, you will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, and a surface to write on. The student packet for ELA Grade 8 Lesson 11 can be found at www.tn.gov education. All right, are you ready? Let's begin. This week, we are reading a scientific text called Top 10 Real Life Body Snatchers. Today's focus will be on the text introduction and key concepts. Then, over the next four lessons, we'll make our way through the entire text. Along the way, we'll be gathering important information from the text and working to organize that information in ways that make sense to us. Each lesson will begin with a section which I do more of the reading and talking, but by the end of the lesson, you'll be doing most of the thinking. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to understand about the text is its title. Top 10 Real Life Body Snatchers. Well, historically, body snatchers were people who stole dead bodies from graves in order to study or sell them. Those aren't the kind of body snatchers we're reading about today, though. Our text is about parasites, not people. So the text is using body snatcher as a metaphor for parasites, describing them by comparing them indirectly to body snatchers. We'll come back to that idea. So, I'm pretty sure that you know what parasites are. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? Mosquitoes bite you in order to take your blood, right? And when they do that, the, often, the bite often gets itchy. But otherwise, it usually doesn't hurt us because mosquitoes take so little of our blood compared to what we have. When mosquitoes take our blood, they are acting as parasites living things that survive by using or hurting other living things, which we call their host. So let's repeat that because it will be important to understand that concept this week. Parasites are living things that survive by using other animals as a host. Yes, host, like when you have guests in your home, Parasites are guests that we really don't want in our body. So when we host a mosquito, we're annoyed, but we're really not hurt. However, some parasites do some crazy things to their host, as we'll see in this text. So let's go over one thing before we really dig into the lesson. You're probably familiar with Venn diagrams like this one, right? They compare and contrast multiple things. This, this Venn diagram shows some of the things parasites do when they infect their host. Some parasites use chemicals and venoms. Some parasites lay eggs in their host. And some how change the host body features and some do a combination of two or even all three of these things as we read about 
10 different parasites this week. We're going to be sorting them into the various sections of this Venn diagram. For example, if we read about a parasite that uses venom and changes the body features, but it doesn't lay eggs, we'll put it in the upper left section where the circles overlap to show it's in the chemicals and venoms and changing body features, but it's not in the laying egg circle. If we read about a parasite that changes body features, uses chemicals or venoms, and lay eggs, we'd write its name in the very center. You get the point. You know how to use Venn diagrams. So I want you to take a minute now to draw out this Venn diagram. When you do, I want you to make sure that it's big enough so that you can write several names of parasites in the circles and also make sure that you label each of the circles. I, if I was doing this on my paper, I would have it just take up a, really the whole page. All right, so take a minute to create your diagram. Okay, great. Now hold on to that diagram. We are going to use this all week to help organize all of our information. We'll take notes on the diagram and that way we'll be able to really keep into our mind what all we've gone through this week because it's really going to be a lot. All right, so we have our Venn diagram ready. We are ready to begin reading. As I'm reading, if you want to take any kind of notes or just jot down things that you find uh, important or interesting, feel free to. Um, when we get finished, we'll go back through the text and review what it says. So you'll even have back time to write down some notes as well. All right, here we go. Top 10 real life body snatchers. Parasites and zombies are not science fiction. They infest rats, crickets, ants, moths, and other creatures sucking the life out of them. By Megan Gambino, smithsonian.com, October 24, 2011. To ensure their own survival, parasites alter, that means change, the appearance and behavior of their host and the creepiest ways. For instance, rats carrying the parasitic protozoan Toxoplasma gondii, which reproduce inside the gut of a cat, no longer fear the smell of cat urine. In fact, they are attracted to the scent, according to a recent study. This way, Infected rats walk right into the grips of a feline. All right, so let's stop there for a second. First of all, they are attracted to the smell of urine. That's gross. But then let's go back up to that first sentence of the paragraph. So it sounds like par parasites can alter two things in their host. Take a second and look at the sentence and jot down the two things that parasites alter in their host. Take 30 seconds.
perfect. So they can alter appearance and behavior. So let's think back to that mosquito. Do mosquitoes alter their host behavior? Not really. So that's one thing they don't do. But do they alter the host appearance? Hmm. What did you think? So if I get bitten by a mosquito, my skin reacts. It gets bumpy and red and itchy. So, yeah, it does alter the appearance of, of me, the host, if only for just a little bit and for a short amount of time. <clears throat> The rest of that paragraph I read was about a case in which a parasite changes its host behavior rather than its appearance. Do you remember how? Let's go back and read it once more. For instance, rats carrying the parasitic protozoan Toxoplasma gondii, which reproduce inside the gut of a cat, no longer fear the smell of cat urine. In fact, they are attracted to the scent, according to a recent study. This way, infected rats walk right into the grips of a feline. First, do you remember what the word feline means? Yes, it is just a cat. But wait a second. What about that phrase, parasitic, protozoan, toxoplasma, gondii? That is a mouthful. That's a little bit much. So let's try to break that down and figure out what that phrase actually means. So first word, parasitic. We know that that is a parasite, something that is taking something from the host. A protozoan is a type of living thing that you have probably learned about in science. And Toxoplasma gondii, is its scientific name. We are going to be hearing lots of scientific names like that in the text. Don't worry if you don't really understand them. Just know that they're names scientists often use to refer to different species. So say that word with me. Toxoplasma gondii. Awesome. Sometimes we non-scientists have different names for the same species. For example, what do we call the animal that a lot of us have in our homes that plays fetch and barks? Yeah, we call that a dog. Scientists often call that Canis familiaris, the scientific name for dog. But let's take a minute now to write down that term, Toxoplasma gondii. On your paper, write it down so that you have it to make a reference to. Take 30 seconds to write that down into your notes. Toxoplasma gondii. Okay, so back to the text. So, rats carrying the parasitic protozoan Toxoplasma gondii, which reproduces inside the gut of a cat, no longer fear the smell of cat urine. In fact, they are attracted to the scent, according to a recent study. So, I don't know about you, but when I smell things, like I automatically know sometimes I don't need to go near it. Like if I smelled cat urine, I really wouldn't like it. If I am walking down a trail, out hiking and I smell the scent of a skunk, I'm automatically going to start looking and be on the lookout for that animal because I don't want to go across it. So a rat is the same way. If it smells where there is cat urine, it wants to be on the guard to make sure that it's not going to get eaten and or caught by that cat. But here we see a change. So what does the rat do if it's infected with that Toxoplasma gondii? Yes, 
That's right. It actually just goes toward it. It likes the smell of it. It attracts it. So it's putting itself in danger, in harm's way, by running toward the, the something that probably wants to kill it, wants to eat it. So that's a pretty powerful parasite. I am really thankful that when mosquitoes bite us, they don't make us put ourselves into danger. Now, they make me scratch pretty good sometimes, but I'm really not in danger. Okay, so now that is just the text introduction. That is just the teaser to get us started and get us interested in what we're about to read. The text goes on to say, here are 10 other parasites whose sophisticated manipulations of animals are more horrifying than fiction. So let's look at those two words real quick. Sophisticated. Now, sometimes sophisticated can mean um, we are very intelligent. We know all the right things to say. We, when we're out to dinner, we eat with the right silverware. We're sophisticated. Here, this word means advanced more than just the simple um, reaction that a stimulus might make us have. If we manipulate someone, that means we are making them do something. So here we have sophisticated, advanced ways of making something react. So it sounds like the rest of this text is going to show us some pretty complicated ways in which parasites alter their host appearance or behavior. Now, I wonder what some of those sophisticated manipulations might be. We've come across some clues already, haven't we? So for one thing, we heard that parasites tend to alter or change two aspects of their host, appearance and behavior. I already know about mosquitoes and about those protozoa that live in rats. What were they called again? Look at your notes. Yes, Toxoplasma gondii. But I think I can expect to learn about how parasites that alter their host appearance and behavior and how they do it in other ways. Maybe they make their host look entirely different rather than just a little bit red or bumpy, or making them do crazy things like running into the jaws of a cat who wants to eat them. <clears throat> Can you think of anything in popular television that, or literature that might make, make it not be similar to what you're hearing? Yeah, so I think about zombies, about how they are changing their host and making them behave and alter their appearance in different ways. I also expect to learn about parasites that fit into those three circles on our Venn diagram, since that's the way we're going to be organizing the information that we get from the text. Do you think that there are some parasites that would not fit into those three circles? Yeah, probably so. So then a question I would have too is, I wonder what they do to their host in order to survive. And after all, I know that from the example of the rats, Toxoplasma gondii, that parasites can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. So powerful, they can control the behavior of hosts much larger than what they are. Finally, and this is this goes back to my zombie um, example. I have seen some television shows, and they make it look pretty gross. So I wonder just how gross and graphic kind of the text might be um, as we go through and read. Look at that last line of text. Here are ten other parasites whose sophisticated manipulations of animals are more horrifying than fiction. That word horrifying. And then I go back to the first sentence of the text in the creepiest ways. So the author has used the words horrifying and creepiest. 
So again, that just makes me pretty interested in what I'm going to be reading because I want to just see how horrifying and creepy that they can get. So I have already, based on this very first introduction, got my brain engaged and ready to just see how creepy and horrifying and interesting the next few days of the reading of the passage is going to be. It's actually made me pretty interested in the topic. All right, so today was all about getting us ready to learn a whole lot about parasites and what they do to their host. This is a really challenging scientific text, but we're going to be able to break it down and make it really understandable for you. So before I let you go, I want to return to a point I promised to make earlier in the lesson. Remember the text title and the historical meaning of body snatchers? Right. The text is about parasites like Toxoplasma gondii, not about people robbing graves of dead bodies. So why do you think the author titled the text Top 10 Real Life Body Snatchers? That's a question I want you to try to answer in, in your independent work today. I want you to take a minute to write down the question on your notebook paper and then take a couple of more minutes to think through what your answer would be and write down your response. Okay, so do something for me. If you have somebody there with you that you can read your response to, I want you to read it to them. If you don't, just read it out loud to yourself. And I want you to think about, is this a real quality response that you can be really proud of as an eighth grade student? So take about 30 seconds just to read your response to, to yourself or just someone there with you. Perfect. All right, let me share with you my response and let's let's think about how close we were to one another. I wrote, although parasites may not physically steal their host bodies, they take control of their host bodies and use them for their own benefit. So they steal them in a way, just not in the same way body snatchers usually steal bodies. So what do you think? Do we get kind of some of the, the same ideas there? I'm sure we did. Awesome. So we've come to the end of our lesson. 
thank you so much for spending this time with me. I have really enjoyed beginning our learning about parasites today and their host. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Goodbye.